In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the parallel axis theorem to calculate the area moment of inertia of a rectangle. This is the parallel axis theorem. The area moment of inertia about the x axis is equal to the area moment of inertia about its centroidal axis plus the area of the figure times the distance squared. Now this distance right here is the distance between the two parallel axes, hence parallel axis theorem. I sub x is equal to the integral of y squared over dA. Now dA is the area of the region. Okay, so we want to calculate the area moment of inertia. I sub x, this is the area moment of inertia about the x axis. We perform um, the following. We solve the integral of y squared over dA, which will result in a double definite integral. Okay, here I have a representation of the rectangle. Here you can think of this line with a slope of zero, just a constant, but we're actually going to call this y equals h. This is just the height of the rectangle. Okay, this right here is, we're going to call it x equals b. Okay, all this length from here to here is actually the base of the rectangle. Okay, now we're going to apply the parallel axis theorem the following way. Parallel axis theorem says that um, I sub x is going to equal the integral over the region A, which will actually be a double integral. Okay, you're going to integrate y squared dy dx okay we're gonna go from 0 to h these are our bounds on the y-axis our bounds on the x-axis we're gonna go from 0 to b or from 0 to the base of the rectangle okay so this is a double definite integral that we must solve I'm gonna put it here in a different page okay so we have the i sub x is equal so the double integral from 0 to b and 0 to h of y squared dy dx, okay? This is a very simple integral. This is going to be equal, well, we are first going to integrate with respect to y. So y squared, its antiderivative is y cubed over 3. We're going to evaluate it from 0 to h. This now becomes h cubed over 3. Okay, now this quantity, we are going to now integrate it with respect to x. So i sub x is the integral from 0 to b of h cubed over 3 dx. Notice that h cubed over 3 is a constant. We're integrating with respect to x. Its antiderivative is h cubed over 3 times x evaluated from 0 to b. This is going to be equal to, plug in our upper and lower limit, b h cube over 3. Okay? b h cube over 3. Now what is b h cube over 3? b h cube over 3 is I sub x, is the area moment of inertia of this rectangle if it were say to rotate about the x-axis, but we actually want the centroidal area moment of inertia of this rectangle, okay? Well, we have the parallel axis theorem, which states I sub x is equal to I passing through the centroid plus A D squared. We know what I sub x we just calculated is B h cubed over 3, so this is going to be B h cubed over 3. This is going to be equal to I sub C, the area moment of inertia through the centroid of the area, plus area times distance between the two parallel axes. What is the area of a rectangle? Is base times height. So we're going to put here base times height. D squared, well what is D? We look at our sketch here. Um, this is the axis, which is parallel to the x-axis. This distance right here 
is actually h over 2 y equals h over 2 okay because the y coordinate of the centroid of this rectangle is actually half the height okay so which h over 2 so we're going to multiply this by h over 2 squared okay so notice that all we have to do is solve for the unknown i sub c doing some algebra we have b h cubed over 3 is going to equal to i sub c area moment of inertia about centroid axis plus well what do we have here we have b times h we have another h squared this makes a bh cube bh cube remember this two in the denominator is being squared this becomes a four okay this is just solving this algebraic equation for i sub c and we get the i sub c or the area moment of inertia of a rectangle Passing through the centroid, the centroidal area moment of inertia is 112 bh cubed. Okay, you can find this in your textbooks, static textbooks, or general physics textbook. You can see here <clears throat> that the dimensions of the area moment of inertia are going to be dimensions of length to the fourth power. Okay, so whatever units you're measuring in, you're going to be units to the fourth power. Power. So this is one way of checking if your <clears throat> reasoning is correct, if your units come out to be to the fourth power. This is the centroidal area moment of inertia of a rectangle, which is equal to 112 base times height cube. You can see here from the equation that if you wish to increase the area moment of inertia of a rectangle, of this cross section right here, it is more convenient to increase it by increasing the height now that we see that the height here is being cubed okay so this quantity h cube or the height cube is actually growing say at a rate way faster than what the base does okay so if you want to increase the area moment of inertia you can either um increase the base of the rectangle and also the height but you can see mathematically it is more convenient increasing the height now that the height is being cubed just remember that the units of left are going to be squared. There's going to be your units of area moment of inertia. And this is actually the area moment of inertia of a rectangle. Of a rectangle. And this is the centroidal area moment of inertia. Of inertia. Thank you.